Here's a fire scene we've all been called to or will be called to at some point in time in our careers, either as the firefighter, the fire officer, or the fire investigator. This is a fire in a juvenile's bedroom. It's apparent in examining the fire room that we could see first in the closet, a fire has taken place in the closet. It's evident by examining the interior side of the door, which is almost completely consumed, that the fire has taken place within the closet with the closet door mostly in the closed position during the course of the fire. Notice the charring on the molding on the left side of the door, the charring inside the entirety of the closet, the clothes that have fallen down, and the significant amount of fire damage that's taken place in the closet. In contrast to that, another area of the room where there's almost the same amount of damage is on the juvenile's bed. Looking in the room, in the contents of the room, we see that there's fires in many places within the room. There's a small scorch mark of a fire on a book. There's another fire inside an open dresser drawer. Yet again, there's an additional fire on a group of boxes of toys and books and puzzles located on a chair. As we start to look at the fires that have taken place in the room, it's clear that there's no natural mean for the fire to communicate from the bed to the closet or the closet to the bed and certainly not to the other areas where we note fire damage throughout the room. This fire scene is a classic juvenile set fire. If you're the company officer that responds here or you're the fire investigator charged with determining the origin and cause of the fire in this particular situation, you're going to be challenged by several factors. You're going to be challenged by conducting an investigation at a scene where the potential for ramifications coming back to family through press, through denial of insurance coverage, through stigma in the community are high. You're also going to have to deal with issues concerning the interviewing of juveniles, how those interviews need to be conducted legally with the rights of the juvenile protected at all times. You're going to have to determine whether you conduct this investigation as a criminal investigation or whether once you determine the origin and cause of the fire and are able to identify the juvenile responsible for setting the fires, if there's a program available, a juvenile fire setters program, some sort of mentoring program to get the juvenile involved in in lieu of a criminal prosecution or in lieu of a juvenile record. As we continue to look in the room and we conduct our investigation, we need to be extremely mindful that the investigation that we conduct is thorough, it's complete, and that it's conducted in a way to identify and to isolate as much evidence as possible within the room that we can use as concrete and documentary proof to show what took place here. As we go through the debris that's located in the room and we start to examine the different areas where the fires have taken place, specifically looking at the interior of the door, on the floor we notice a handheld disposable lighter. If we move back towards the area where the bed is, we note with the door in the closed position moving over the lighter that there is no fire between the door and the bed. Clearly multiple points of origin. Again, moving towards the bed, a heavy concentration of fire located on the bed and an additional lighter located in the center of the bed that has started to melt down. Looking again at the other contents of the room, we see how they've melted, how they've moved, how they've distended, how the heat has affected them during the course of the fire. When we move back over to the dresser and start to examine the toys and the remains of the fire debris that is here and start to note again that there's an additional fire located within the, the bottom dresser drawer, it's obvious that there's no other potential origin or cause for this fire given the contents of the room, the occupant of the room, when we start to couple that with information we glean through interviews with the first arriving fire crew, with the inhabitants of the house, the parents, and potentially the juvenile itself, we identify this is in fact a juvenile set fire. As we glean all this information from the fire scene, we need to be firm in our determination and we need to stand with that determination and we need to move forward with that determination even if we meet resistance through family or through other pressures. Clearly this is a juvenile set fire.
Thanks for watching.